welcome back to Andy Capital educational YouTube channel. Today, guys, I will explain how you can use TPO chart. Me and myself, I've been in the financial markets for half a decade now. I've been using TPO charts for the past three years, and this is pretty much all my knowledge about it and everything you need to know. Of course, if you want to know more about it, please join the Discord check the links in the description. Also, there's a newsletter which you can subscribe as well. So just go in the description of the video, check out the website, go visit. All the information I give out is available for everybody that wants to learn more about it. So let's begin. Today's agenda will be what exactly is the TPO chart? What are the elements? Why does it work? What is the theory behind it? We're going to speak about also the difference between time and volume because TPO stands for time price opportunity. We're going to be talking about selling, buying, sales, wicks, e.g. completed and complete auctions. We're going to speak about single prints and imbalances as well. So, introduction. Time price opportunity, e.g. TPO, is pretty much known as market profile. It analyzes the market activity by price level as it develops through time. It provides a visual representation of how price move between specific time blocks. It helps us understand market dynamics, price distribution, because it's all visualized in front of us. Pretty much we use the TPO to determine the price levels with the most or the least activity, which provide us uh, with pretty much references where it will most likely uh, price go. Pretty much the TPO has been developed by the um, Chicago Board of Trade in 1980s and it's been used primarily in futures commodities and at the moment you can use it across every single asset you can think about. Me and myself I use the TPO chart on futures, primarily on DAX, ES, NASDAQ and on Bitcoin. Um, I don't use it on Ethereum, I don't use it on altcoins but Pretty much you have to use the TPO chart on very high liquidity assets and especially right now I do believe these are the high liquidity assets which you can use it on to have the highest probabilities. Next, what exactly it is? So this is how it looks, right? You have pretty much visualized how the price distribution has happened throughout the day. <clears throat> what are the elements? We have, we have pretty much between five and ten elements which i'm gonna explain very briefly so first of all we're gonna speak about the value area the value area is the range of price levels where a significant amount of tpo blocks are concentrated similar to the volume profile it concentrates usually between 60 and 70 percent of market activity and we do have the initial balance eg ib which represents the first hour of trading which is the um, a and b capital a and capital b letters in tpo eg the two 30 minute candles we do have, of course, buying and select sell, BTST, two or more TPOs at the extreme of the session, type of excess, lack of buyers or sellers, reverse back to value. We do have also poor highs, poor lows, unfinished auction. I'm going to explain this later on. We do have single prints, where price trades through an area before finding value at new price point, creating imbalance or inefficiencies. You know, a lot of people speak about imbalances, inefficiencies, all kind of stuff, uh, FFGs, uh, fair value gaps. Same thing, but pretty much you can get the most accurate information for FFGs via single prints. I'm gonna explain this later on. So stay until the end. We have ledges, drop of drop of two or more TPOs can create a draw for price due to untapped liquidity. We have anomalies, a single TPO sticking out, usually it's like a small week or doji, and the rest is like open, close, high, low, mid, point of control. And just have some water. Pretty much the summary is the following. We do have the point of control, price level of the great smart activity. We do have the value area, which represents 68 or 70 percent of the market activity. Uh, we do have the single prints, which are <clears throat> actually I'm gonna explain later on details. I'm just giving you a quick brief of what exactly are the elements of the TPO. And we do have the TPO letters, which are basic elements of a TPO chart, where each letter corresponds to 30 minutes. Uh, of price action. Now, what is the theory behind it? Please check this picture. Auction market theory. And let me just read you through. Auction market theory depicted by the TPO chart analyzes price movements over time. It applies to all type of all time frames, pretty much, viewing price shifts as rotations between buyers and sellers. And when price shifts, it marks the end of one auction and the start of another. Buyers enter when price seems low. 
while sellers enter when price seem high. This mirrors the basic concept of an auction where bids adjust until fair value is reached in trading, trading auctions that occur daily at market open, adjusting prices based on buying interest. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is the auction market theory. Uh, pretty much it goes behind, th that's the theory. So you do have like a fair value, which is like a balanced market, right? Where the demand is equal to supply. You do have like a range bound scenario. Then a market event happens, you do create an imbalance. And pretty much this means that you have more demand than supply or more supply than demand. And then you go into discovery, searching for new buyers or sellers. And you have like a lower volume. This is how it looks. So let's say this is how a new car is being auctioned, right? And um, this picture is being taken from JLFX. Shout out to the gentleman. Thank you for providing me with a picture. So you do have like a new car, this is how it looks. You do have like a $35,000 car. It has like a fair value. It ranges between 33 and 38, let's say. 33, 38, buyers coming at the low, sellers coming in the highs. Pretty simple, right? Then a market event happens, you do create an imbalance and you create a new fair value. And then another market event happens and you do create an um, imbalance again. Pretty much that's how it goes. Here we have like more uh, demand than supply, that's why you create the imbalance. And here you have more uh, supply than demand, that's why you create the imbalance. And pretty much in between you create these fair values, which are typically range bound markets. And keep in mind that the asset is being range bound pretty much 80% of the time. Let's speak about volume and time. Because you have the TPO chart on, on trading, you keep in mind that volume and time the different measures and uh, sometimes they can be different right so in this example here's what i'm showing <clears throat> over here on this day you do have the time point of control down here and you have the volume point of control up here why is that well pretty much because all the volume came in at the highs but price spent most amount of time at the lows keep in mind that there's gonna be a difference because because one is measuring time the other one is measuring volume. That's the main difference. In this dif here on this picture, that's a DAX. You can clearly see the difference as well on this uh, profile point of control. The TPO is here, and then the volume point of control is here. And on the next day, you did tap that volume point of control. So use the point of control of the time profile as a reference. Keep in mind that the volume profile point of control is gonna be stronger than the time point of control and sometimes there can be a difference so keep that in mind let's speak about selling and buying sales weeks or eg completed or uncompleted auctions selling sales buying sales similar to a week or a tail on candlestick chart you can pretty much see if an auction is being completed or not so let me just read you through on a tpo chart excess eg <coughs> selling or buying sale that's an excess. It signifies the natural conclusion of an auctioning process whereby the price has traveled too far from value and it auctioned and it came back into value, right? And when a TPO chart is missing excess, it is said to be an unfinished auction and pretty much most likely price is going to come back into that area to finish that auction. And a poor high or low is when there are two or more horizontally stacked TPOs at the highest of the lows and price has visited this area into different time periods without creating meaningful access. In other words, this is an unfinished auction, right? Day traders, we can use this information uh, provided by TPO chart to determine the strength or the weakness of the current auction without meaningful access, the current auction becomes vulnerable to test the poor structure. So let's uh, take a look at this, right? So here on that day, you do have unfinished auction, e.g. you have a poor high, e.g. there is missing access. And on the next day, you do create that access you do leave that selling sale and then you push back down so even the push back down i'm gonna explain later on why we why did we came back into that area exactly so ladies and gentlemen take this information in the exact way i have just explained no need to complicate things here's some more information put low in the market profile characterized by price level where downward movement ceases without clear rejection resulting in flat narrow bottom on the chart this means that uh, there is a lack there is a lack of uh, sign of strong reversal to put it that way there is no access there is no tapering there's no access 
and usually this area is being revisited. Same thing applies for the poor high. Please pause here, read this through. Single prints and balances. Let's talk about this now. Single prints are levels containing only one block and another extreme, which means the level was only reached once in profile period, and they're considered important because they can indicate market interest and the real imbalance. These price levels might attract future trading activity because they represent where the imbalance was created, right? That's what I said. Uh, let me just come back into that picture here. Here, you do create an imbalance and this imbalance is being retested. So you can pretty much, th th that's what happens here, right? Um, let me just try to put the chart. So yeah, here's the chart, guys. You, you do have these single prints. And also just uh, a quick mention. Even right now, you do have this single print. Price comes back and test that. So keep that in mind. And on um, exo charts, what I like to do, I like to look at charts any single prints. Uh, show only first print range, right? So that's what I like to look at exo charts because it's going to give me the first the last pretty much all this in the middle i don't care about i do care where it was initiated so this is going to give you the most accurate information keep that in mind you can pretty much see here you had the imbalance created here and here and then that's why you came back filled it up pretty much to the door and left that bank town moved up um so yeah keep that in mind coming back into the presentation let me just give you some examples and explanations so let's say here, um, that's just a, a quick screenshot uh, from a gentleman of, in Twitter. Let me just sh give a quick shout out to him. Um, to, 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 to Peter Mink, congratulations for sharing this information. I love when I see other people doing this type of stuff because this is true information about the markets and how do they work. Um, so this is a screenshot for the gentleman. So pretty much here you do have a um, profile open outside of the composite profile then you come back accept it you feel into that single print the exact same thing that i just explained look at the first print you came you tested that you did create that reversal and price went to find a new fair value here's some more explanations same principle here that's a range bound scenario pretty much that's how the tpo chart looks when you have pretty much merge that. So you have a discount, everything outside of values is considered as a discount or a premium, anything outside of that value. You have an excess high, you have an excess low, pretty much that's a good range bound scenario. High sold into quickly, lows bought up quickly. You can clearly see here, poor high, poor high, leaving that selling cell coming back down into that low. Same scenario here, nice bank tail, nice selling tail. That's how they look like. By understanding where fire value lies, we can have an objective look on the market rather than subjective because markets are in two different phrases, trading, trending or bracketing, e.g. range bound, ranging. While we're in a range bound environment, two way trading between buyers and sellers is taking place. And keep in mind that any asset is in a range 60 to 80% of the time. Let me just give you another quick Example, when we're trending, when the other 20% of the time the market is trending, this is when there is a very little responsive buying or selling from higher time frame participants and we drive into one direction for a sustained period. During that time, we're seeking new fair value. Price is simply adverse adver advertising mechanism, <coughs> which is used to entice new business. For a market to successfully auction away from its current fair value, it would need a large amount of volume and force to overcome the pool from the previous distribution. If unable to sustain this volume on the breakout, then we assume the price will eventually rotate back to uh, its prior value. So um, let's just take a quick look, quick look on BTC, right? Let's take a quick look, guys. Without anything, let's take a look on the daily time frame. So pretty much, this is the way the daily chart looks on Bitcoin, right? So here. You do have trending days, you have range bound days, you have trending days, e.g. finding new value. And here you can pretty much see trending, trending, range, 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 trend, range, trend. Um, that's how the daily looks, right? Uh, but then we convert back into 30 minute time frame, that's the way it looks. So keep that in mind. Um, 
Coming back into the presentation, I just want to give you information about this uh, screenshot. Value is pushing high without overlap, e.g. this value area is not similar to this value area. Same thing here, price opens and drives high without first within the first couple of hours. You can clearly see the initial bounce here. Trend begins to get more aggressive, larger participants step in to fill the large um, orders. Same thing here. That's another screenshot where I explain third auction below previous day's value. You have this previous day value. Then you do have that third auction. You, came, you come back into that value. Range, 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 range. Price breaks out, finds new value and continues to trend upwards. Single print, single print. EG imbalance. Um, so let me just show that picture again. Please remember this. It should all be um, looked in this perspective, right? So last but not least, keep in mind that you do have different type of days. You have normal day, you have normal var variation day, you do have a trend day and you do have a neutral day. So keep these things in mind. I do share more information about these things. If you want to learn more, join the Discord. You're going to find more, you're gonna find more information to the Discord and also on the website and the guides and the videos, everything that I have created throughout the years. J just go and take a look at them. More information you can check on the website www.ndcapital.network. Thank you for watching this today. I wish you all the best. Stay wise and have fun trading. Enjoy it because this is the best skill you can develop. And I want to thank you for looking into this presentation. Cheers.